Gennady Golovkin, Triple G, is a household name to boxing fans, but he faced a long road before arriving at boxing superstardom. Golovkin battered opponents for years before landing his blockbuster matchups with Canelo Alvarez. As the hype for a fight between the two grew in 2016, negotiations between the Canelo and Triple G camps fell apart, and Golovkin looked for a new opponent. Triple G agreed to fight British middleweight Chris Eubank Jr., but that fight fell apart shortly thereafter, and Kell Brook was named as a replacement. The fight was intriguing. Kell Brook was the reigning IBF welterweight champion and undefeated at 36-0. The fight was scheduled to take place at the O2 Arena in London and highly publicized. Brook looked physically strong heading into the fight, but he was moving up two weight classes and 13 pounds to fight at middleweight. Triple G entered the match having stopped his previous 22 opponents, and at the age of 34, he was finally getting international recognition. That fight offered Golovkin an opportunity to fight a well-known boxer as he sought to increase the demand for a fight with Canelo. The fight started off with Golovkin pursuing Kell Brook around the ring, similar to many of Triple G's fights. Golovkin wobbled Brook early in the fight. Oh, that's a heavy body shot. Oh, yeah. He's never been hit like that before. That body shot was huge. But Kell Brook showed flashes of aggression and was able to land against Triple G in spurts. As the fight progressed, Triple G became more aggressive, but Brook never stopped fighting and was able to come alive and land in bunches as Triple G stalked him around the ring. Heavy jab, stepping with his jab as well. Gets plenty of force on that jab. As he advances, Seen Brook box, but he's always in control of it under intense pressure. As he ominously stalks forward, it's when they get to these positions. Does he carry power at middleweight? Brook. Oh, he needs to be. Brook oh, electrifies the arena. Oh, oh not nicely here. This is really. It's spark a response from the Kazakhstani. No, it's Brook still pulling it on here. Unbelievable. It's a tremendous start for him. But almost had him on the floor. Triple G felt those. He really did feel. He felt the blunt of those shots. He felt the weight of those shots from Kell Brook. It's a good round for Kell Brook. Now watch out. Here comes that uppercut. And that's what it's from. Well, Brook will be hoping for another round like the second. It's more of a stumble there. Kell Brook's foot as he switched from south, orthodox to south. He's straight back on him, isn't he? Yeah. He knows he's going to have to bring his back. For this man. Oh, he is. But Abel Sanchez said, don't look for it. Don't rush it. Good jab from Treble G. And another. Formally sets up everything for this man. Oh, he is up. Golovkin. And a jab. One of those signature body shots. Yeah. And Brook not looking so comfortable now. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He Out right of the face. Where he took that left hook in the first round, came down, he switched it up to the head. Oh, that's a big right hand. Yeah. You cannot give this man anything. Here comes Brook again, though. Oh, some damage being done in there at the moment in this round. You see how he just edges his feet in. Brook's right eye is not looking good. No, it doesn't. There's blood coming from somewhere. I think it's the nose. Oh, Brook digging in. Oh, Brook was still firing back. Oh, it's a matter of time. Just keep on and I'm Are you with these hooks upstairs? Yeah. That's a good right hand there from Kell Brook off the ropes. That was probably the best shot he landed in that round. Made an inroad. So. Landing some nice right hand counters, Brook, but 
Does he land it quiet? It doesn't oh, seem to be. He's, he's advancing now, Golovkin, and he's looking to land these heavier shots. And Abel Sanchez was calling for him in the corner to start stepping it up now. Showing that he's not going anywhere. But suddenly, that ring looks very, very small. As something to give him out. Get any space at all. It's Golovkin with that superior footwork of it. Again there, Brook. Good jab there again, okay, it's just that solid gets so much weight on. Is that the best jab in boxing right now, Matt? Yeah. I'm not seeing an awful lot of Brook coming forward here at the moment. He just no. keeps getting pulled when he comes forward. Tries to be a right uppercut, does Brook. Actually moving towards you is so effective with his defence. Normally, most boxers pull away or slip to the side. He Kel broke that shit. You want to be there? You're still there. <laughs> Pulling him back. This is a good combination from Golovkin. And Brooks not answering it. We've seen from him before so many times. No, oh, the hook's coming round, but it's the, the shot that's the set. Guard. Every, you know, and he just, it just looked. Well, those jabs getting through. When he threw that there, it's in trouble. Brook is in a lot of trouble. Oh, these are heavy shots as well. There's a toe on it. Brooks' corner stopped the fight in round five. Earlier in the fight, it was apparent that Brook was dealing with an eye issue as he repeatedly touched his right eye. Brooks' corner was increasingly concerned with that eye as the fight progressed, and Brooks' trainer called the fight when he had seen enough. After the stoppage, Brook immediately confronted his corner, and his trainer's response was to point to the area under the eye. It was later revealed that Brook suffered an orbital bone fracture or a broken eye socket on the right side of his face. Brook would later endure surgery in which his eye was temporarily removed while a titanium plate was put into place and drilled in with screws. And Brook's career went on while Triple G landed his biggest fights the following year. Looking back, it was a fight that had meaningful consequences for both Golovkin and Brook. And while the fight lasted less than five full rounds, it was an action packed event to be remembered. Thanks for watching Boxing Pantheon.